Hello friends and subscribers, a very warm welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosalie here, bringing you today's video, or I should say tonight's video really, uh, from Jerusalem in Israel, like the rest of the world. We went back to uh, winter time a couple of weeks ago, so now we have these kind of uh, delightful short evenings and it's starting to feel very nice and wintry uh, here so of course there is a war going on as kind of everyone around the world at this point seems to have an opinion and know about uh, but it's also been going on for more than a month and it's just kind of at that point where I feel like there was a tipping point in the Russian UK Russian Ukraine conflict at which it's just difficult to engage so closely with the news for that amount of time once you get past the one month mark, I think it becomes hard uh, to sort of keep that mental energy with it. So to an extent, uh, like many people here, because obviously here uh, the war impacts our daily life to quite a considerable extent. So I've started cutting back a little bit on my news coverage, uh, on my news consumption, I should say. But something that has been uh, making the news here in Israel, actually surprisingly, has been Ireland's response. So I'm firstly, I'm sorry to folks who are long-term long -term subscribers and uh, subscribe look, hoping uh, you might get some interesting videos about Israel and instead there's been a bunch of stuff about Ireland. As an Irish Jew with a uh, Jewish family living in Ireland, it's uh, difficult for me not to sort of get sucked into this territory, but our usual programming about uh, my expeditions to parts of the border and uh, well may maybe not that that's probably not a good idea for the considerable future to go uh, poking around uh, any border especially not the one with Lebanon uh, but we'll get back to uh, other things soon as well on this YouTube channel just because unlike most of my videos this one is free form I don't have any script um, I'm going to be adding timestamps so if you're sick of me uh, jammering on already and you want to get to the point uh, feel free to skip ahead so as I mentioned, Ireland's uh, reaction to what's been going on here in uh, Israel has been making news. Um, it's been making news and it's also the kind of in, only in the last year I started really being, uh, my Hebrew is good enough to start consuming news in Hebrew through the TV, through reading articles and reading comments. Uh, and that was where I came across, by the way, these uh, a few people calling for stuff like boycotts and uh, breaking off diplomatic relations. Um I don't, I just want to put this out there once actually, I've already commented this and wrote it on Twitter, I don't personally boycott Ireland, I have no intention of boycotting Ireland, and I think the boycotts are really, really ineffective, um, generally. My rationale was firstly, I did read people saying they're uh, considering it, secondly, I have to admit, I wanted to kind of uh, ruffle some feathers on the Irish left and perhaps troll them a little bit, um, and uh, that objective seems to have been met because I think my tweet uh, stating that there were some folks here thinking about that got something like a qu I think 260,000 impressions on Twitter the last time I checked anyway quite a lot and uh, generated a lot of very fierce uh, sort of reactions uh, on the Twitter sphere but I wanted to put it out there again just to, not to not so much to throw mud over the fence but just to point out that when people are talking about diplomatic relations and stuff like boycotts, there's always the possibility that the other side uh, can do the same thing. And I actually have, well, I think the boycotts are a terrible idea because boycotting Israel, the BDS movement, firstly, it's ineffective. Secondly, you're targeting, you're not targeting, you could be affecting the livelihood of Palestinians. Um, in fact, some of the uh, classic targets of BDS are the some of the few kind of havens in Israel where there is really good cooperation between Palestinians and Israelis. And likewise, some of the Irish exporters doing business here, including uh, Teeling's Whiskey, who I met their team, or at least one of their team members recently, I think they're a great company. And, you know, you do have people like Richard Boyd Barrett uh, getting up and making that I think are anti-Semitic remarks. But my objective ire for that is actually the uh, Irish police, the Gardaí. Um, I think that there is a line of legitimate criticism of Israel that nobody opposes, including me. Um, and I question the proportionality at times of what's happening in uh, in Gaza. But when you go and, uh, you know, call, accuse Israel of committing a genocide, which is really a baseless accusation, ethnic cleansing is completely baseless, baseless, apartheid is baseless, and any, I really support the IHRA definition, the working definition of anti-Semitism. I didn't really go into the detail in the video, but the um, 
what the, what are called the instances in that definition. One of which is that comparisons between Nazi Germany and Israel are uh, anti-Semitic. Even some governments that accept the definition don't accept those, including Ireland. But I think the Israel Nazi Germany one really should be because I don't see any reasons for any valid comparisons to be made, and it's only done very deliberately. And uh, I think it reflects anti-Semitism. And I do think that Richard Boyd Barrett is a uh, anti-Semite because he have it up on this YouTube channel. Uh, stood up in Dublin a few days ago and uh, likened Israel's genocide. Uh, in Gaza to what the uh, what the Germans did to the Jews in the Holocaust and I think that's totally unacceptable and I really think remarks like that should be classified as hate speech there is hate speech legislation in Ireland uh, there's been articles recently about uh, Irish Jews being scared and I think I don't think that you know sort of debates in the dull about about the proportionality of the response make people scared I think people like Richard Boy Barrett make people scared. Um, and I think there's a total, there has been a failure on the part on Ireland's behalf to tackle anti-Semitism, which is rising there as it is in other countries around the world. Anyway, um, I want to talk today about the expulsion or the proposed expulsion of the Israeli ambassador. Uh, there's going to be a motion coming before the Irish parliament, the Dáil, on Wednesday of this week, propo- uh, calling for the expulsion of the Israeli ambassador, right? And I wanted to just say a few points about that. Firstly, proposing to expel the ambassador makes no sense. Um, This is the first thing I have to say about it. It, I don't understand why they're looking to expel an ambassador. The ambassador is just kind of the front person of the embassy. um, And it might be because the incumbent Israeli ambassador to Ireland, Dana Ehrlich, had the temerity to tell Michael Higgins D. Higgins, the president of Ireland, uh, to opine that Ireland was not neutral when it comes to um, Israel-Palestine. And I think that is 100% accurate. Ireland, Ireland's foreign policy, even its re- recent voting history um, at the EU, in which it was joined by Spain and only like one other country um, in trying to uh, get a demand for a unconditional ceasefire without referencing October 7th, uh, it's it's a pretty foreign it's a pretty hostile foreign policy and the Irish left, PBP and Sinn Fein are falling over themselves trying to play uh, mental gymnastics or maybe I should say, uh, word gymnastics trying to say that well we're military new neut- we're militarily neutral, which is easy when Ireland has a very very tiny army but anyway they say we're military militarily neutral but that doesn't mean our foreign policy has to be neutral. Uh, and that makes, I think, absolutely uh, zero sense because it's not just foreign policy isn't just words. It's voting action, which has big, rep- big ramifications. And I think that once you pursue a one sided foreign policy, which Ireland does about Israel, you're not neutral and that's fine. But uh, so it doesn't make sense that to me that uh, she was called out uh, for that. But anyway, read my previous point. I don't know why expelling the Israeli ambassador is a logical target. Because if you expel one ambassador, the second in charge at the embassy, the deputy will probably have to become the ambassador. And then what happens, you, you want to, you know, it's like kind of a, I forget the word, like jumping chairs, that game or musical chairs uh, that, you know, you play as a kid. It's going to be like they expel one and then someone comes in. So it's illogical. Um, and the second thing really is that now when I say definitely opposed to uh, boycotts. That's, I think, a flippant idea. But devolving or uh, constricting diplomatic relations with Israel is an idea I have, with Ireland, is an idea I have supported. Now, pro-Israel folk in Ireland, and there are some of them, will say, you know, well, what about us? We're we're pro-Israel, don't tar us all with the same brush. And my response to that has been that, you know, uh, embassies are there really traditionally to talk between governments not to talk between people. And I don't see why pro-Israel movements can't exist, even in countries without uh, strong diplomatic relations. And uh, the only idea I've suggested is really constricting relations with Ireland, like managing them out of the UK as they were done for a while. That's called a non-resident embassy. Uh, Because I do think that there, you know, there comes a point where it's just hostility and it's kind of like a friendship where you're just kind of arguing the whole time. You kind of wonder at a certain point, 
is this friendship worth maintaining? Uh, so that's my point, read the diplomatic affairs. But in any, in any way, if Ireland chooses to initiate this, the problem they're facing is the reciprocity and diplomacy that Israel will kick out the Irish embassy here. And people have, ex people have expressed the self-interested concern in Ireland that doing so will imperil uh, two things. Firstly, the government's attempt to uh, get an Irish citizen, Irish-Israeli dual citizen out of Ireland, out of Gaza. Um, and secondly, there's apparently also 40, 40 other Irish passport holders in the Gaza Strip. So people are saying, hang on, if we kick out the Israeli ambassador and they kick out our, our embassy, we're going to have a hard time getting these people out of Gaza. The second issue that I've seen, and it's worth pointing out, is that Ireland is a big troop contributor to the United Nations interim force in Lebanon are called UNIFIL, and that if they were to uh, kick, lose their representation in Israel, that might somehow, I don't exactly understand uh, how, but I do actually, because the Irish army has a base in Israel. Uh, remarkably, I was surprised to learn this a couple of years ago, uh, while I was poking around the north of Israel, doing my weird geeky hobbit, geeky uh, ho hobby of border spotting, which I now would not suggest in a million years. It do not go near the Israel-Lebanon border now, and that's not. It's not actually. It shouldn't be. I shouldn't be trying to make a, a laughing at it because uh, people have actually been killed in the last few days by being targeted by uh, rockets across the border. And when you watch these videos that they show up on the Hezbollah you side to realize that on the border anyone can pick you off so uh don't uh do what i did a few months ago and stand 70 meters from the lebanese border or at least wait until uh the security situation has drastically changed but anyway uh when i was up there in the communities along the blue line a very beautiful part of israel um i saw that there was an i think it's called camp zaytuni and it's where uh it's an irish army base on israeli soil uh that services i think it's actually undof the undof is the uh, un mission doing the peacekeeping between israel and syria unifil is lebanon and their bases in nakura so anyway there's various reasons why uh it might be problematic from ireland's perspective what i wanted to talk about uh in this video was a couple of things and i'm going to add timestamps to all this jumble of words so it's uh, a bit intelligible um, was firstly uh, just dealing with a couple of questions firstly you know is this going to actually happen and I would add as another question is there precedent so I went on uh, went on Google as I do and uh, I saw that there is precedent Israeli ambassadors have been kicked out of uh, Turkey and uh, Bahrain and other countries but this would definitely be if this were to happen and I'll explain in a second why it's very unlikely to happen but if it were hypothetically it would be really a very unique thing for a Western democracy. And it would really put um, Ireland already, it's kind of sort of out of culture with the EU in a very strange uh, anti-Israel uh, position. But it has happened. So I don't think we should discount the possibility that it can, could potentially happen. If not now, I suspect if there is a change in government in Ireland and Sinn Féin really get into power, then uh, that is, that's where I think this could actually really, really, you know, be like a legitimate thing that would occur. So I don't think it's a, it's a non-runner indefinitely. Here's the Irish uh, government here. It's called Dáil Éireann. It's a, Ireland has a bicameral system and Dáil Éireann is the, um, but is the, is the legislative chamber. And uh, now what happened is, the, the crazy guy I've done videos about because I think he's anti-Semitic and I think that this race hate speech needs to be shown to the world that it's out there uh, so that potentially someone could do something about it. Uh, he is, uh, I'm talking about Richard Boyd Barrett, he is people before profit. As you, as you can see, they've only got five seats. But Sinn Féin, who have done an about uh, U-turn on their position regarding the tenure of the Israeli ambassador, initially they said... It's not constructive. And then their leader, Mary Lou MacDonald, uh, came out a few days ago. In fact, at the Sinn Féin Ardèche over the weekend said we should expel the Israeli ambassador. So assuming everyone votes along party lines, adding up the numbers, we get 36. Uh, mathematics are not my strong point, as uh, anyone watching this uh, can, can probably tell. Uh, 41. And the Social Democrats who are actually tabling this now uh, will get you up to so we're kind of in the 40s and maybe 50s if labor can be convinced and 
if the Green Party can be uh, can get some defectors. But this uh, this core of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael together comprise sixty nine seats. So in order to get a in order to get a majority, almost all the opposition would have to vote um, in uh, in unison for about this, and Green Party would have to defect almost entirely. So it's a very unlikely scenario. But that's why at the moment uh, you're seeing Social Democrats who are tabling the motion. That's why they're lobbying the Green Party and Labour to get their people over to it. Because people before profit already support the cause and Sinn Féin support the cause. So currently it's a a tripartite group of uh, 36 and 36 and 6 is 42. 42 and 5 is 47. So they've got 47 members sort of baked in and uh, uh, potentially so it's it's probably not going to happen but in any event uh, I just wanted to point out as well that this they tried before uh, there was also there was a previous uh, motion to expel the Israeli ambassador that was in 2021 and that failed it was during uh, it was during Operation Guardian of the Walls so uh, whenever Israel goes to fight a war in Gaza Sinn Féin and people before profit get their knickers in a twist and uh, try to kick out the Israeli ambassador. And this isn't anything new, by the way, to kick out, kick out the ambassador. It's been like a motif, even since I would say before I left Ireland in 2015, I used to monitor Twitter um, and you'd see people going on about kicking out the Israeli ambassador. So it's been a kind of long-standing fixation of the Irish left, this idea of forcing the Israeli ambassador out. Now, there's one uh, lady that I wanted to bring up on the screen, and she is... I'm going to explain why this is significant in a second. So, I hadn't heard of Holly Cairns until uh, two days ago, because I guess I just don't keep up with Irish politics so carefully. She is the leader leader of the Social Democrats, and I want to point something out. Well, firstly, she's younger than me, which is... uh, I must admit, pretty cool. It would be cool to be a professional politician in your uh, young 30s, if you can still call it that. Um, but she, this this politician, uh, Holly Cairns, is tabling the motion as the leader of the Social Democrats. Now, I'm going to just zoom myself over here. This is just at the tail end of the Irish Times article, and it's really significant, and I'll explain why. It says, Social Democrats leader Holly Cairns said that the ambivalent response of the international community to the litany of war crimes uh, Israel is allegedly committing in the Gaza Strip was shameful. Ms. Karen said that the EU's trade deal with Israel should be suspended until it complies with international law. Um, now, when we're talking about the trade deal, this uh, the reason I'm highlighting this is it would be much more, this is much more significant because if Ireland were to break off its diplomatic relations with Israel in a hypothetical world, again, I have mixed feelings. Part of me is like, well, you know, just go ahead and do it because you've been talking about this for years and... Uh, uh, it doesn't seem like a very, very warm relationship. And, uh, you know, maybe maybe we're better off without those relations. Um, but uh, it might cause more trouble on the Irish side. And it also might cause Ireland trouble because it would be taking a very contrary foreign policy decision to the EU. Now, what Holly Cairns is threatening, and again, uh, this is not something that's actually going to happen because the motion will fail and they're throwing all these things into the motion. But this agreement, the Euro-Mediterranean agreement, is, as far as I can tell, the agreement being referenced. And you can see here, Ireland's a signatory to it, as well as all these European countries, and the EC, and the European coal and steel community, and Israel on the other side. So this kind of document forms like the framework for relations. And there are formalised relations between the EU and Israel, we saw in the realm of aviation the Open Skies Agreement that was amazing, amazingly beneficial for uh, for Israelis and good for Europeans as well, I would think. Um, you know, I'm sure both parties, I'm sure Ryanair is benefiting plenty from uh, operating flights from Ben-Gurion. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, Ireland can't suggest that they kick Israel out of the EU because Israel's not in the EU. But Israel does have this framework that uh, governs relationship, uh, governs relations, and it's here now. I, I'm just I have human rights up on my search because I want to point out where her line of attack, uh, Holly Cairns. It says here in Article Two that relationships between the parties, as well as the provisions of the agreement itself, 
shall be based on respect for human rights and uh, democratic principles which guides their internal and international policy and constitutes an essential element of this agreement so i would say this is a very very nebulous clause it doesn't kind of say, well, there is, we're going to hold Israel to this yardstick for human rights. And if it doesn't pass that yardstick, the uh, agreement is null and void. But that's what she is arguing, that there is this clause in the Israel, uh, you know, Israel Mediterranean Agreement. And it says, if you're not a human right friendly place, then uh, that's kind of an essential part of this agreement. And her line of arguing is that, well, if you're not a human rights abiding country, then this agreement should be thrown into the garbage bin or onto the fireplace, whatever analogy you prefer. Um, so that is is being tacked on as a like kind of addendum to the coverage in Ireland because everyone is so fixated on the idea of, you know, they're trying to kick out the Israeli ambassador. And um, even if this uh, motion in a hypothetical world that it did pass, I think that would actually be uh, the, and it was a binding motion, which it isn't, that would actually be the bigger uh, takeaway, in my opinion. Uh, there's much more. That would be a much more. It would be extremely hostile action um, by Ireland against Israel. And even if that effort was also doomed to failure, uh, it would be more significant. And I think I've said enough at this point about the what's going on. Um, in summary, uh, there are there will not be um, this motion. Probably, almost certainly, will not pass on Wednesday. But you know. Pigs can fly tomorrow and uh, dramatic voting patterns can happen. Uh, in any event, it would be non-binding, uh, but it does represent an attempt by uh, by the Social Democrats to not only kick out the Israeli ambassador, however logical that might be, uh, but also to uh, attempt to undermine and in fact uh, cancel uh, Israel's, the agreement holding the Israel-EU relations together. Thanks for watching uh, today's video. Uh, hopefully uh, a couple of things, I've said a couple of things that were interesting about what's going on. Um, as I mentioned, I think Ireland's uh, policy towards Israel is, has sort of evoked a lot of interest on this side of the uh, the bilateral. And uh, I am seeing quite a lot of coverage. So certainly this is something of interest to a lot of folks here at the moment. Uh, thanks for watching. If you want to get more videos like this, do subscribe. We'll get away from the Ireland theme eventually. So keep with the YouTube channel if you're so inclined and uh, looking forward to bringing out new videos very soon.